it's Rachel from Central Texas Zone 9A, and it is time for the first garden tour of my backyard for 2024. I'm a little overdue on this. Um, I won't just do the backyard, I'll also do the front yard. But if you've watched any of my other garden tours, you know I don't like to um, talk much in my front yard videos because I'm on display to my neighbors and everything like that and I feel like a little bit of a weirdo when I film out front so I'll do a voiceover for that bit. Um, so I'm gonna get the camera turned around right now and I'll show you my back porch which is um, actually cleaned up but still very messy um, and our deck is obviously falling apart um, but that is life <laughs> as y'all all know. Um, that's just the way things are right now. So anyhow, let me get the camera turned around and I'll start this video. Okay. So on the, um, back porch here, I have my snowball viburnum here. It's kind of, um, pa obviously past its peak, but it's still looking gorgeous. I'll put a picture of what it looked like, um, about like three weeks ago or something when it was like really, really, all the blooms were just brand new and looking beautiful. I, um, this is its first year to bloom for me. I maybe got one or two blooms off of it last year, but it's just, it's just covered, uh, right now. And the blooms, I was really surprised with how long they lasted. Um, this is my, um, little pot, um, rose. Uh, this one's called, I think the fairy and it's just real sweet and I'll keep it in a pot. It's, it says it's a good container rose. So anyhow, um, that's that. Here's a, um, this is a rose bush that I'm going to be planting up here. Um, I think this one's called Pascali and it has these beautiful white blooms on it. I don't have one open currently, um, but really beautiful, makes good cut roses. Let's see here. So here's the um, information and I just got that at Lowe's and it looked really beautiful and I thought I'd get some nice cut flowers off of that. So over here is a um, bougainvillea. It's got one little bloom up top up there but I did just transplant this and I know they hate their roots to be di being disturbed so I don't know how that's gonna do. It's still growing a lot, um, putting on a lot of new foliage but it d they do say if you disturb their roots too much you might lose blooms for a few years so I'm waiting to see how that one does um here is my let's see here if I can figure this out wrong way sorry I'm working my gimbal stick here this is my um over here <sighs> what is this it's a magnolia. I knew that. This is my magnolia. I'm trying to train it into a little espalier. It is the uh, dwarf variety. It's the little gem one. So, and you may have noticed this giant freezer here that, that broke recently. <laughs> it started smoking. Uh, it's our deep freezer. So that's why it's sitting out here on the deck. This is my um, little pot. I do need to clean it up. It's very dirty. Um, uh, you usually put the, the, I have had the red flash in there for the last couple of years and I love that in there. It's just started to reemerge recently. So I went ahead and pot, potted those back up. I, this is my, I usually dig up my caladiums and keep them. Um, most, they advise not to do that. Um, I don't know why, but anyhow, we'll see how they do. This is like their third or fourth year of me doing that. Um, I can't exactly remember what this, uh, uh, exactly how old they are, but anyhow, that's what I've that's what I do or have done for the past few years. So, um, cause I really enjoy my red flash caladiums. I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. Just one of my favorite caladiums. Um, I went ahead and stuck some, this came back from last year. I was really surprised, especially since it's in a pot. Um, and then I just stuck a <laughs> white blooming petunia in there because I had one. So yeah, that happened. And then panning around, if I can figure out how to work this, okay. Here's my planter I've stuck corn in. <laughs> and I also went ahead and stuck um, some of my, um, they're called, um, s salmon is what this color is called. Salmon something, I think. Anyhow, um, I grew those from seed. I need to check if my, if it's actually my drips actually working because nothing's really growing. And so I do wonder if stuff has, uh, is not um, performing well because the drip is uh, off or something. I'll have to check it. 
But anyhow, I stuck my corn in there because I didn't have anywhere else to stick it. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to grow corn on our back deck and have it kind of grow up and maybe kind of be like a little evergreen screen uh, along with my um, black bamboo over here, which I love. That was a gift to my husband because we both, he really loves um, black bamboo. And so, um, and certain other varieties of bamboo, but uh, I went ahead and found him some black bamboo and got him some because he thinks it's cool looking and I would agree with him. So anyhow, um, that's that here over. Let me try to work this gimbal here over this way is our grill. Um, and these are all a bunch of little plants that have either, um, I haven't figured out a place to plant them yet, or I'm waiting for them to get a little bit bigger, or they're going out to the property garden and stuff. So that's, that's all that. <laughs> this one needs to get repotted. It looks really sad. <laughs> I got it on discount and then I um, kept it inside all winter and I did, I did not water it well. And it's just been very unhappy. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it outside in the shade um, and see and repot it and stuff and see if I can get it to kind of reflush back out. I've had it like reflush once or twice over winter inside because I would like remember to take care of it. And then <laughs> I do have a lot of indoor plants. I should probably do like a um, indoor video plant garden tour, but anyhow, regardless. And then this guy is a tomato that I grew from seed um, and I just needed to stick it somewhere uh, in a, a pot. So I got a ton of these on sale. They were like ten dollars and then for that size and i don't usually like those kind of pots at all but i was like for the price and then i got these also on sale for like twelve dollars and i was like okay i don't like how they look but i and you know some people might like how they look they just don't really fit in with what i had going on pot wise but i was like for the price and how large they are i was like i cannot pass this up so i went ahead and bought like four of them or something um anyhow um yeah so that that's where I got all these little pots um, on sale for, and I really like it. Let's see here. So again, this is my area of stuff that I need to fix up and get into their their forever homes. Um, uh, going to the uh, exit from the deck, we have two um, terracotta planters, and I always keep like m different varieties of mint or usually herbs, and I use those for a lot of cocktails and sometimes cooking. Usually for cocktails, though, I love a good mint julep. Um, whether it's um, derby season or not, um, I like mint juleps a lot. <laughs> um, and then over here, I have a couple more planters with corn in the middle. In the I could talk in the middle, and I planted my little peppers around the outside. Over here is my little raised garden bed. It is a very tiny garden bed, um, but this is all I am doing so far for, um, for vegetables and things like that. I have my tomatoes in here. They do have a cage to keep the squirrels out because the squirrels are little pests here. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I do need to sprinkle some, some things been eating my, the leaves on some of those on, especially on the uh, eggplant. So I need to come and sprinkle some stuff around there. And I also need to come in, I'm going to cut this grass down and maybe put mulch around it just, um, so that the, this little netting that I got from the gardener supply, I think is where I got it from when it was on sale. Um, and it just barely fits the tomato cage. You can see it kind of pops up the netting up, up there. But anyhow, um, yeah, and then we have a bunch of mess over here that I need to clean up, and there's a tennis ball from the neighbor's dog. Um, <laughs> those frequently make their way into our yard. Um, anyhow, this is just, um, yeah, it's, I've got my tomatoes that I'm growing. I have, uh, so I have my tower, and I usually plant on the four corners of the tower. And then I have a couple peppers that I grew too. This is my sunshine ligustrum that I absolutely love. I do trim it up to look like a tree. I do need to trim it up a little bit more. And I have um, purple foliage stuff planted under there. I did plant some dwarf um, laurel petalum because I love the chartreuse with that burgundy purple. And I did kill two of them. I think I just didn't, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just didn't water them enough, honestly, since they're already planted under something that 
probably is drinking up all the water and I just assumed. So I only have one left and it's looking really sad. It's like kind of further back under there. You can't even really see it. But I have some of this other um, Tratoscantia under here that comes back every year. And I think that looks really nice too. So I'll probably just, since it's there, I'll just let it kind of do its thing. And then panning over, probably too quickly, is my um, patio uh, that is a wreck. <laughs> and here are the planters that I just potted up. Oh, sorry, going the wrong way. That I just potted up not that long ago. Not that long ago. They are doing okay. Um, the coleus my mom had given me, she'd um, taken it from cuttings. So it's looking a little leggy. I might pinch it back so that it starts branching out further down. So these I'm kind of not expecting them to look nice for spring. I'm expecting them to look nice for summer. So they do look a little ratty right now. They have a um, prostrate rosemary or creeping rosemary and then we have the blonde ambition grass. They have little olive trees that I do think I'm going to um, clean up on the stems a little bit more so that's more of kind of like a little lollipop you know kind of look to it and then I did stick in a white blooming um, <sighs> petunia um, that I grew from seed and then I have the matching plot pots over on oh crap over on this side as well so these are kind of my, uh, these planters, you, I know it's, it's a little overcast right now and then it's also in the morning. And so um, this area gets morning shade and hot afternoon sun. So these planters are mostly in sun, um, but kind of just like right on the edge of the sun. So right back this way is like dappled sunlight. So I may need to move this pot forward because it is supposed to be a full sun planter. And those plants can handle full sun, maybe not the coleus, but everything else in there for sure. Um, this is my little Miss Figgy. I have not gotten any figs off of this. This is its second year, still no figs. Um, I have my um, Tokyo Wombly Tower. I think that's what it's called, Wombly Tower. Um, it's a crepe myrtle, Japanese um, maple, sorry. And I love it. I love that um, so much. I may have to either trim back this sunshine ligustrum or move it, move the um, wombly um, maple over a little bit because it's, they're kind of competing a little bit, but I'm just so excited for that to grow up and just be this tall burgundy, you know, piece here. Um, and then here's all my other little planters. This is a, um, native palm for central Texas. I'll put the name below because I, I always forget it. I think it's like palmetto or I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, and there's just, I stuck some begonias and calla lilies in that one, that planter. So yeah. And over here is a little grouping of plants that um, are going to go in my backyard border bed somewhere, minus the agave. That one I keep in a planter until someday when we either redo our house or move or something, I'm going, I'm going to put that in a special place. I believe that's a whale tongue agave. I could be wrong about that. Um, I got it off of Etsy like several years ago. It was a teeny tiny pup. I think I got it about three years ago. And it was like the tiniest little pup and now it's getting really big and it's just, you know, you just feel like such a proud plant plant person when you, you're, you grow a, a plant from like a teeny tiny baby and then it's starting to get big and you're like, oh, you're growing. Anyhow, that's, I don't know if anyone else feels like that, but I definitely do. Over here, I have maples ready to go. This is a coral bark maple. I'm just super excited about that one. I love it's like weeping habit. And then um, I don't remember what that one is. <laughs> I have two, um, I dug these up because they weren't super happy where I was going to plant them and I, or where I had them, their um, fragrant tea olives. I'm, I'm sorry about the jerky camera motion. I am still learning the gimbal. So it's just not going to be the smoothest um, videoing ever. Plus I'm just not very savvy at this stuff. Anyhow, um, anyhow, so back to the plants. These are two um, that I dug up and I will plant them along my back fence to be um, an evergreen screen. So I'll kind of space them out. These are the Carefree Wonder Roses. This is a Japanese maple that I have killed. I think it's called Kumata. Um, this is another um, Japanese maple. Let's see here. There we go. Right here that I'm staking up because it is a weeping one. And so I just want it to get a little taller first. So I'm training it to go up and over century agave 
oh, I'm sorry, I'm moving way too fast for these, uh, for this, sorry, I know this, this is really jerky cameraing. This is a, um, some kind of palm that I got, like, for a killer deal at Lowe's because it was super unhappy, and I'm just going to leave it in part shade out here in the summer. I do need to repot it into a bigger pot. <laughs> This is my guava tree here I've had for a couple years. It is, I mean, this thing wants to be a huge tree and I've been like trimming it <laughs> um, back to be like a smaller tree and it's just not, I'm not doing the greatest. I don't know what I'm going to do with that because it does want to get so huge. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I may end up giving that away because I don't have the space for it. And then also I don't have a greenhouse to put it in. So I have to take it in during uh, during winter and stuff. So anyhow, that that's to be decided. Um, back here, I have a, another uh, bougainvillea that needs to get repotted. It's just in too tiny of a pot and it is about to burst into bloom. So I'm like really hesitant to like repot it at this moment. Um, over here is this um, camellia and it actually I see it has a bloom on it this is kind of crazy it still has a bloom on it oh that's really pretty it's a little old but it's still gorgeous um this is the what is it called silver waves camellia and I'm kind of as training it to be an espalier I obviously I know they're supposed to kind of come straight off but I kind of liked this up and like over pattern of the branches. I think that's kind of cool too. So I don't know what you, if you'd still call that an espalier or not, but I'm training it to do something. Okay. <laughs> I'm training it to do something. Um, over here is a big grouping of plants that I have. I love the color. This is usually what I have going on is I love the green, the blue and the terracotta together. Um, everyone has their, you know, kind of pop color combinations that they really like. And that's what I really like. Um, but I've kind of wandered off that obviously, cause I just went and grabbed a bunch of, uh, this, um, one that was on sale. But anyhow, um, I love just the, the brighter greens and the, the purples together. And this is my dragon wing begonia that I've had for several years. I take it in in winter and I just love that plant. It is so pretty and it does really well in part shade here. So I know in some areas you can have it in full sun, but I have it in part shade and I think it, it does really, really well. Okay. So starting over in this area, this is kind of my like acidic loving side of things. I have a lot of azaleas and I have camellias. I have four, four azaleas along this um, little um, shed and then two camellias. And then I have um, some other little japonicas that um, I'll put their names in below that I love. Um, they're, I'm, they're, I'm, they're new to me. I've never tried them before, but I'm really excited about them. And then I have a, let me, a white blooming um, kind of dwarf laurel petalum um, that's, whose name I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have a second one right over, right over here as well. Um, here I have a Nellie Stevens holly that I want to tree form and grow up to be kind of like, um, oh, sorry, to be kind of like a big, like, cover over this area and just kind of continue with the shade garden. I have two white blooming dwarf, um, what are they? Camellias. And I don't remember the name. I'll pop it back up on the screen. Um, and I need to remove these daylilies because this is becoming such a heavy shade garden that I, and will continue to become even more shady. Obviously, there's a little bit of sun. It does get several hours of sun, but it's mostly, because we have these huge um, oak trees over it, it's mostly shade um, these days. So, continuing on, let me zoom in on this guy. I have a, I think it's called a cloud 10 rose, climbing rose. And this is by the same um, person who does the who developed the knockout roses. So I'm really excited. Um, I have a couple more buds, three more buds here, and then the blooms. It's funny, this one came out really white. Oh, there's a little bug. That one came out really white, and then this one over here was a lot more yellow, buttery kind of looking, but it's just a really beautiful rose. Um, I'm really excited. It says it, they can do part shade, so I'm kind of test, excuse me, kind of testing it out to see how it does in this, um, you know, 
area where it doesn't get much sun. I think it gets maybe like three or four hours of like sun and then dappled after that. Swing over here. I had a bunch of bulbs. You can see all the foliage is still up. I will insert a picture of how that looked when they were in kind of full swing. Cause again, I did not really do my spring. I know this is still spring, but <laughs> I didn't do my early spring, you know, uh, you know, I didn't do a tour then. And so I missed a lot of, um, the bloom. So I'll have to insert some pictures of stuff, what it looked like. I have a American beauty berry here. I think that one's the glam berry or something. I'm not entirely sure. This is a persicaria here. I love the leaves on this. Um, the leaves are just such a, have such a gorgeous pattern on them. I, this does bloom little white blooms, but they're kind of insignificant looking. Um, and I definitely keep this for the foliage in winter. They turn like a really, my, you know, that burgundy purple color that I say I love so much. <laughs> so obviously, um, that's part of the reason why I find it a super attractive plant. I think it's really cool. It does need shade. Um, I think it probably usually performs better in cooler climates than mine, but, um, I think, um, when I raised it, I, I had it planted more in heavy, heavy clay and it's, um, it's just seemed to, um, when I moved it, it's been a lot happier. So it's kind of planted in a raised, um, garden bed mix, but still can send down tap roots and stuff. Um, moving over here a little bit more. I have a pink blooming crepe myrtle that I need to stake up because it's leaning quite heavily. Um, and then in here I have a Japanese ghost fern. This is a Fuji waterfall hydrangea. It's its first year in the ground. And I planted um, some white blooming begonias for some, I, I just, the, when I bought the, um, dragon wing begonia it really got me to love begonias whereas before i kind of hadn't really um worked with them before um and now i'm i'm really um interested to see how more of them do and stuff so i bought more and i've stuck them in this garden bed you can see another one over here um this is a columnar um type boxwood here that i'm testing out to see how it does this is a euonymus and then i have over here a podocarpus um, this particular variety of, is, is of spirea, I adore. It is such a gorgeous chartreuse green. Um, and you can see it's getting ready to bud out or bloom. It's putting on some bloom heads. It is just, they're just this hot, hot pink. And against that chartreuse color, this, this plant just pops. I think it's called candy something or something. I'll have to put it on, I'll have to put this name on the screen. And then right next to it, um, had my Concord grape, um, barberry is coming back from when my gardener, my, not my gardener, my, uh, lawn guy, who's his assistant came and chopped it down. I guess he thought it was dead during winter and he chopped it down so bad. Um, anyhow, it is coming back, but it's like a third of the height it was. So that would have been filled out the space here with this lovely, you know, purple, color next to that chartreuse that I just kind of wanted like chartreuse, purple, chartreuse, purple. This is my um, purple oxalis here that I love. Um, and I have another Concord grape here that he also cut back <laughs> and my um, chartreuse spirea. I have a rose here that's supposed to do well in part shade. It is called, I think, Sally Holmes. It has white blooms. It has not bloomed for me yet. I do think I might need to move it. I think it's in a little too much shade. Um, I have another podocarpus here. This is my um, oak leaf hydrangea. I do not remember what variety it is. It's not ruby slippers. It's like, um, uh, I don't remember what variety it was. I've had it for several years. Um, it's one that's going to get like eight feet tall or more. So it's definitely going to come up over this fence. And it's it used to be on the back of my house planted in heavy clay. And I moved it to this kind of, you know, raised bed area. And it's loving life so much more here. Um, moving on to over here. This is my hydrangea. I think this is Bobo. Um, this is, um, again, this is one of the plants my lawn guy cut back because he thought it was dead. And I was like, why would you cut my plants back? I didn't, I did not, I did not 
I was super nice, okay, when I taught. I was like, um, maybe just cut the grass next time and no more plant cutting, please. Uh, anyhow, um, I have a, um, a bloom head on it, which I was really surprised because he cut that back really severely. So I'm surprised I have any blooms off of that. But I do. This is this plant's second year in the ground, and I'm kind of testing out hydrangeas to see which ones do well. So I have probably, I think I have like four or five hydrangeas. I, so I have this one. I have an Incredible over here. I think this is the Incredible. I'm either mixing those up. One of these is the, um, um, the one's Incredible and one's the Bob something. What is it? What did I, I just said its name. I just said its name. Anyhow, I have two here. I'll put the names up on the screen. Um, moving over here, here's another columnar boxwood, another euonymus. This is my, and I have another, um, hydrangea down here that has done, this one has done amazing. It's a second year in the ground as well. It's its, um, second year in the ground as well. And it's just done really, really good. Handled the heat well. It does not, it's, I think it says it's like good to zone eight or something. So I'm definitely testing that one out. Um, we'll see if I get any blooms off of it this year. Um, really happy with how it's, how it's been performing so far. I think I have an allium coming up here. I'm not, I don't remember what I planted. Sometimes I'm like one of those people, I stick things in the ground and I don't necessarily remember where I plant things. Um, this is a dogwood. It does send up suckers that I'm going to have to go up and pull, uh, pull, but it's covered in little, um, bloom heads right now. And it will burst out into bloom here. And, um, then the blooms will turn into these cute little white berries that the birds love, I love this tree. Aside from the suckering, I really love it a lot. I have two gray owl junipers that are really beautiful and a painted Japanese fern. Um, I have some of these little grape hyacinths that are supposed to come back every year. I had, this is my favorite of, um, uh, this is little honey hydrangea, oak leaf hydrangea. And I love this guy. So, so pretty blooms. Every year, you know, I don't even really care about the blooms. I just love the foliage. It's so pretty, so pretty. And then I have another like glam berry, beauty berry right there. Then I have, um, I planted this last year. It's um, gonna grow up, cover this fence, hopefully here. That is a, I think it's called blue cone arborvitae. So moving along, hopefully this year I'm going to finish, um, I'm going to bring more stone in and kind of finish this bed out. But for now, I went ahead last year and planted up these so, so they could go ahead and get rooted in um, and start providing, um, growing and becoming a screening plants is, um, this is a, a Midnight Carolina um, Laura Petalum. So that's going to get quite huge. I am tree forming it. I have a Black Hall Viburnum. And if y'all remember when I planted that, um, it, it, I severely disturbed the roots on accident and um, because they, they had, it hadn't been rooted in well. And when I got it out of the pot, like all the dirt fell away and um, that thing sat dormant for forever and it finally flushed out. And I was like, oh my God, thank goodness. Because <laughs> I really, really, really have always wanted a black hot viber and I'm in my backyard. I just, or just in general, I just want one. <laughs> It's a um, wonderful little native, like um, small tree or large shrub. So I'm tree forming all the all the um, stuff along here. Um, we do have um, power cords right above here, so I do need small trees. Not I can't have like it, it's better to pick bushes that get to like 12 feet tall, and and um, and then I can kind of maintain them as little trees. That's kind of what I'm going for. I have a beautyberry bush here. Um, this guy here that I'm tree forming as well, I'll put its name down below. I've not gotten any blooms off of it yet. It did get some winter dieback, but it's looking pretty healthy right now. This is a golden showers thyralis that I really need to clean up for, for winter. It comes, it dies back and then usually comes back from the roots every year. Um, it's coated in weeds right now, need to cut it back, but actually some of the stems actually survived through the winter. So that was great. Okay, and over to the side of my house, here's a little swoop of um, bronze fennel that I planted from um, my little seedlings I grew over winter. I have a, uh, I moved my, right here, my weeping uh, red bud right there, and I think it loves it a lot more right there. I have a kind of awkward looking um, 
what is that? Uh, dogwood right there, native dogwood. The native dogwood is called a rough leaf dogwood. Um, so that's a, that's a native one. And the one I have that I just shown in my back, um, back fence garden bed looks, the form of it, it looks a lot nicer than this one. So uh, I'm not sure why that is. This one also suckers like a ton more. Um, and then at the base, I have this softly put yucca that is definitely intruding into the pathway, but I love that thing. It is so no nonsense. I absolutely love it. Over here, I have a um, orchid tree um, and an aspirea down below it. And then I have a crinum lily right there. You can kind of just see it right there. It has not bloomed yet though. I'm not, I mean, I've had it in the ground for several years. It's still alive though. Um, and then down here, I have a down here, I have a hibiscus that blooms these really large white blooms and it is coming back from the ground, but I don't remember, I don't remember what it's called. So sorry about that. I have a squash planted on this trellis right over here. That's really loving life. It's, um, I kind of planted a lot of this side bed. I call my, um, butterfly garden. It only gets partial sunlight. So a lot of things don't do super well over here. It's hard to find plants that, that do well. Um, so I kind of planted a lot of my seedlings over here that I grew over when I had, cause I had a bunch of extra ones. I was like, I'm just going to try sticking them in the ground over here and see how they do. So I, I planted a lot of squash. I planted some of my corn over here too. And I planted, um, my zucchinis over here as well. And it made me have a cucumber also. I don't remember. Um, but I have a lot of butterfly, um, milkweed, um, over here. And I have, um, some mooly grass as well. Um, I have a skeleton eye golden key. What is it? Skeleton key. Uh, I don't remember what it is. I'll put the name below. Um, I have a, a bunch of the native, um, little pepper plant here as well that I love. I love that so much. It gets these cute little white, white flowers. Um, and then here's our little fairy garden that's looking a little sad right now. We need to come in. I let the kids paint rocks here when they come over and then um, we kind of usually plant up the garden and stuff, but I have not done that this year yet. So we need to um, come in and let them uh, uh, mess with it a little more and play with it and plant it up. This is one of my favorite rose bushes. It's called the ballerina um, and it's just adorable. It gets these clusters that look like um, pink, just pink grapes. I'll go in closer and show y'all. Um, and then after the, the little clusters come rose hips that are just kind of very tiny and delicate. Here's some of the clusters that are flowers, just really sweet and pretty. You can see there's a bunch ready to go. They kind of usually form in um, these more kind of grape-like clusters, um, but it's just got, it's, it's about to burst into bloom all over. And moving into my front yard, this is what I call my rock garden. I'm moving to voiceover because I don't like to talk in the front yard videos. Um, but the rock garden is looking really great. I love having this little kind of different landscaping here. Um, I have sedums and things like that in it and nandinas and other things. Um, also have my blaze rose. It's a climbing rose. I planted that last fall. Um, up here, um, only one of my Esperanzas has come back. Uh, so I have some other screening plants that are ready to go. I um, will plant them next to where the Esperanza is at just in case the Esperanzas come back. But I'm pretty sure only this one right there in that corner is, is um, up. And I'm pretty sure that's the only one that made it. Um, I did transplant them quite late last year. So I'm not really super surprised, but I'm a little disappointed that that happened. Um, here are my five front um, planter box beds that um, are just really coming into their own. Um, I do need, they have a bunch of um, uh, irises, bearded irises that I do need to transplant um, out, of, out of them. This is also my first year growing anemones and I absolutely love them, highly recommend. 
Okay, that's it for today's video. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this garden tour and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.